truth of God isn't preached. Preacher don't know and the members don't know. So in many cases, people mean well. They mean no harm. Their intentions are good. But they're blind. Text says, but you are, verse 4, I covered all the other verses last time. Children, you are, brethren, not in darkness. You ought to lift your hand and thank God that you're not in spiritual darkness. That is, that darkness there represents error. Spiritual error. See, the devil is working hard to keep us in error. He's been, and he's been, working, he's been working for a long time. In 1887, the U.S. Constitution was written. The one we have now. Praise the 17, excuse me. 1787. The one we have now in its current form. The delegates that left should have stayed. They had their name on the final document. But 15 years later, uh, Thomas Jefferson wrote a letter to his clients, the Danbury Baptist Association. And the intent of the letter was to keep the church free to be the church without government overreach. He was responding to them. They were his clients. And he agreed with them. The goal was not that the, the state was threatened, but that the church was. Keep the church free. Jefferson wrote and said, believing with you that religion is a matter which lies solely between a man and his God. Not that man, his God and government. Which was his point. That he owes account to none other for his faith or his worship. That the legitimate powers of government reach Actions only. That what was he saying? That the legitimate power of government is to uh, deal with what people do. You can't hit somebody just because they called your name. Reach actions. You can't murder someone. Reach actions. Government is in place. To protect us from improper reach action. This is why many have a problem with the hate crime laws. See, because hate crime, you, you get 10 years if you murder a man just because you want to murder him. You get 100 years if you murder a man because He's a different color from you. Now both men murdered the man. See, the issue ought to be the act. You don't like what I'm saying. This is hard, but, you, but I'm telling you the truth. The, what, what was intent, the, the intent, the, the act. See, not just why. See, man walk up to you and just haul off and hit you. You're not going to ask him, you know, you might ask him later on why did he do that. When you come back to your senses and... Go visit him in the hospital and ask God to forgive you for not having the power to turn the other cheek. Say, oh man, what, why did you do that? But right off the bat, why is not, that's the last thing that come to your mind. Come to your mind to protect yourself. Man who is shot dead is no less dead. Whether the person who killed him is his color or not, he's dead. The government is to deal with reach actions. For whatever you don't hear me, uh, reason, wrong is wrong. 
But he also wrote, he went on in the letter and says, and not opinions. He says, I contemplate with sovereign reverence. So, and see, see, when he says not opinions, what he was saying there, not what you think. And what's, what's in, in opinions is also what one believes. The government that doesn't have jurisdiction over your beliefs. You can, you, you're supposed to be able to read the Bible, or for that matter, any book, and believe it without being in violation of the law. That was, that's the left. I know this is not history, but this is history. I want, I want to show you something. Show you how the devil has been working to keep the truth, to mute the preacher. Praise the Lord. Not opinions. He says, I contemplate with sovereign reverence the act of the whole American people which declared that their legislature shall make, quote, no law establishing, uh -huh, make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Which this First Amendment is dealing with that government should leave the church alone. That's what it means. Make no law. You don't hear me. Respecting an establishment of religion. Don't just stay out of it. Or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, thus putting a wall of separation between church and state. This is where church and state come from. Fifteen years after the Constitution was written, this letter was written. It was written to protect the church from the state. The devil took the thing and flipped it upside down. And there are those now who actually believe that the government needs protection from the church. Oh, the devil has been working hard. You don't hear me today. I'm not getting many amens. Before 1954, churches freely evaluated politicians. Johnson, praise the Lord, put in that 501c3. It was designed to mute the preacher. You don't hear me. Silence the preacher. Put it in the tax code saying uh, Johnson's, the Johnson Amendment was passed by Congress in 1954 as an amendment to Section 501C3 of the Federal Tax Code. The Johnson Amendment states that entities who were exempt from federal income tax cannot participate in or intervene in including the publishing or distributions of statements, any political campaign on behalf of or in opposed to any candidate of public office. Pastors cannot say anything from the pulpit that may constitute support for or opposition to a political candidate. I guess I'm all right because I'm not interested in neither one of these at the top. <sighs> but the point I'm making is, for over 200 years, the church spoke freely. God's truth got muted. See, the problem now with the way they use separation of church and state is, you know, you've heard people say this to me. Get out of politics, preacher. 